So the first thing you're going to do when you're doing the poached chicken salad is get the chicken breast poaching. Fill the saucepan half full, put a stock cube, whatever choice of herbs you want and a, um, some, uh, a slice of lemon or half a lemon in there. And then take some tongs and place the chicken in. Get the water to the boiling point and then turn it down to simmering. The choice of herbs I've got here is uh, thyme, parsley and I've also put garlic cube. Now the crucial thing with chicken is the um, particular bacteria that cause food, food poisoning. So raw chicken needs to be handled um, safely with care. Uh, the two particular bacteria which are very nasty are Campylobacter and Salmonella. Some people pronounce Campylobacter Campylobacter. When you've um, put your first chicken breast in, what you need to do is make sure you wrap that chicken well, but wash your hands so that you're not contaminating the cling film um, that the rest of the class are using. So wrap it, put it in the chiller, and then sanitize the area that you've used and wash your hands so that you don't cross contaminate the next stage. So the typical um, bacterial symptoms um, are there on that picture. Now, the salad that you're going to be making um, would have a little bit of garlic in the mayonnaise. So uh, take the woody buff bit off the uh, clove and now we need to get rid of the papery bit so the flat side of the knife bash it with the heel of your hand take the papery bit off and then chop it finely you only need one clove of garlic in the mayonnaise that you're going to use um, otherwise it might overpower the, the um, gentle taste of the poached chicken poaching the chicken in the liquor that's got all of those other flavors in really makes the chicken lovely and moist and also imparts some flavour to it. So my particular version is going to have parsley and thyme in there but you could put basil in there or if you haven't got time to make um, your own mayo then you can use mayonnaise and add flavouring to it like um, a spoonful of pesto from a pesto jar. Pesto is made with uh, pine nuts, parmesan and basil which is a lovely Italian flavour. So I'm using curly leaf parsley here, it's full of minerals. Uh, chop off the stalk and then um, just chop it finely. And your salad can have a variety of ingredients that give texture, colour and uh, vitamins and minerals in there. What, what, the, what also works with um, chicken salad is uh, grapes actually or sultanas. You could turn this into a um, coronation chicken and there's lots of um, YouTube videos on how to make coronation chicken. This is thyme, tiny, tiny little leaves. Get rid of the leaves off the woody stem and discard the woody stem. But the leaves are very fragrant and add a really nice flavor. Chop them all finely, but the blender will chop them as well. Then you're going to spiralize um, a courgette you can also spiralize um, cucumbers. Um, all of these have been washed very, very carefully and we're going to use the red pepper in a decorative way. So we're going to cut rings rather than cut down the shoulder. Make sure you get rid of all of the um, seeds that they're not pleasant to eat. And the key thing with a salad is a variety. So pretty much anything can go in a salad and uh, Jamie Oliver does a very good uh, salad recipe um, video on YouTube. Some people keep the stalk of the tomato in but I don't actually like that, I find it too difficult to eat um, so I always cut the stalky bit off. Make sure you're using uh, the claw and bridge.
and these are tiny little radishes which when you cut them up look like little jewels that you can sprinkle over the top for an extra layer of interest in your salad. They're also very um, crunchy. So this is a spiralizer. You can actually um, cut slithers using a Swiss peeler if you want to, but I want this to look a little bit like spaghetti. If you don't like this, then you could actually use um, tagliatelle pasta with this as well. Um, but I'm going to make these look like little spaghetti. So they're called courgette or zucchetti. Zucchini is the Italian name for courgette. <clears throat> and you can see it cuts nice little strips that add interest and texture. All your surfaces should have been sanitised and your hands should be very clean because you're handling these salads a lot and they are going to be ready to eat. So a pinch of salt and mustard is, has gone into this jug and in this jug is soya milk. Not a soya drink, soya milk. Then I'm going to put um, some white wine vinegar in there to acidify the protein and make it uh, denature and coagulate. That sets um, the protein. And then I'm going to blend the um, mixture and add oil a little bit at a time. Now this is called an emulsion. Normally with uh, water and oil, which is what that's in that jug, the, uh, you can blend them up and whip them, but they separate after a time. Well, the mustard and the lesser thin molecules in the soya milk will actually m make sure that the oil and water don't separate. So they'll continually be a thick emulsion. Other kinds of emulsions are milk, and uh, butter and you need lesser thin from the soya you can also get it from egg yolk which is the traditional way of making mayo you need the lesser thin to hold on to the oil and water it's a bit like a middle friend that holds two friends either side and uh, who aren't really they do don't really get on but the middle friend kind of makes the group work and that's what lesser thin does here. It holds on to the water and to the oil to make sure it <clears throat> they stay together. The blender shears the oil droplets, in other words, cuts them up into smaller droplets so that it's easier for the lesser thin to grab hold of the oil droplets. If the oil droplets are too big, you can never get a nice, thick, smooth, creamy emulsion. So that's what the blender's doing. Put the blender aside and make sure you switch it off because that's a very uh, sharp cutting blade. And this shows what the um, blender's doing. It's cutting the droplets down and the middle person there is the lesser thin holding on to the oil and the water, keeping them emulsified. Any excess of this that you're not going to use, you must put in the chiller. And there it is from soya milk and oil, creamy emulsion held together with the lesser thin that's in the soya in the soya milk and um, the emulsifying action of the mustard. You don't really taste the mustard, it's more like a slight heat, not very mustardy at all. Um, but it needs to be in there to put the nice edge. You can actually, if you want to, put uh, salt and um, extra pepper in here. You need to taste it to check whether or not it's too vinegary or too oily. If it's too oily, add more vinegar. At the start of this, because of the quantity I was making, I used two caps of vinegar. But if you're making less quantity, you, you can get away with one cap. But taste it to see whether or not you need to balance the acidity in this a little bit more. I could also add pesto to this um, or extra garlic. When the poaching has been done, pull out the breast of chicken and now we need to check that it's done. We could do that in two ways. We could use a um, temperature probe to make sure the inside of the breast has reached 75 degrees C or more. 
or you could break it open with uh, two forks to check that it's not pink in the middle. So any kind of cooked chicken mustn't be pink in the middle. Pink means it hasn't reached the temperature to kill the Salmonella and Campylobacter. So it's very important that you check whether or not um, it's pink in the middle. And I do both checks just in case. Now that the chicken is actually cooked, it's no longer a cross-contamination hazard, so you can actually put it on the same surface as um, the salad ingredients. And then because your hands are clean and you've cleaned your nails, you, you can shred this by hand. Um, but if you don't like the touch of chicken, you can actually use two forks and shred them with two forks. Shredding it like this across the grain means it's easier um, to eat as well. So put them into nice bite-sized pieces. Any bits that are um, black, take them out. Uh, they're perfectly fine to eat, but they just don't look very pleasant. And this is a very moist chicken now that it's been poached. It's one of the healthiest ways to cook your um, chicken as well, and it imparts flavour. So I'm now going to add to the bowl with the chicken in it a little bit of the um, mayonnaise mix it well and then that mayonnaise needs to be covered and put into the fridge and you can um, eat it from the fridge uh, and add it to other salads or a burger over the next 24 hours. So because your hands are clean you can arrange the salad on the plate and this courgette looks really effective. Then think about how you're going to garnish it. This is just shredded spinach. And then add some um, elements of colour. Now you can cut these um, red peppers up so they look like little jewels all over the place. Um, but there's so many ways that you can present a salad. You just use your own imagination. Or you can get inspiration from YouTube or re other recipes. In the 1970s pretty much every salad would have been presented with a wedge of lemon. This is a very retro look. So a garnish um, is a topping. Here you can see the same salad um, but with small sections of red peppers instead of just presenting the whole red pepper. And uh, this needs to be eaten immediately or store in a chiller for no longer than eight hours. And this one's been presented with some plaited bread. So the questions I'd like you to answer here are what equipment is required for this recipe? Uh, list the hazards and the risk avoidance strategies in all processes in this recipe. What are the main bacteria to control when handling chicken? What is the molecule that helps the mayonnaise ingredients to emulsify? And what ingredients would you use to make this salad colourful and have a variety of textures, colours and flavours?